Welcome back to Leaders Live. I'm Charlie Stevens, your host. We had a great episode last week with Serge Millman of Start Adventures. Key takeaway was to tap into your network to grow a well-rounded team. We're gonna have a great episode today with Jared Augustine, the CEO and co-founder of Thusio, the sports, events, and media company located at 26th and 6th Avenue. Let's go up to the fifth floor and talk with this industry leader. Let's go. Welcome back to Leaders Live. Charlie Steen is your host here with Jared Augustine, CEO, co-founder Thusio. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, excited. Uh, before we get into a little bit of your background, what we're doing with Thusio and growing it across the country. Why are we doing this? I'm a real estate guy. Uh, answer is trying to build authentic relationships, understand how you operate, and then try to match you up with other business leaders so that that can help you grow your business and we can all grow together. And I think that's a fun way to do it too. Sounds like a plan. Solid. Let's get into it. Uh, before this behemoth and at, at Thusio, you're growing it. You were at Seamless, you helped grow that company as well into the merger of Grubhub. Can you talk us a little bit about that early business and some lessons you learned from it? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we're a behemoth yet, but we'll, we'll yeah, there. In my mind, you it's are. It's a good word. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Seamless is where I started my career. I spent eight years at that company, uh, uh, you know, working with the founders there. Um, building a business uh, that ultimately uh, was generating several hundred million dollars in revenue and uh, we exited to Aramark uh, Corporation in, in, um, in 2006 um, and what I did there was I was uh, led our expansion market so I would move to a city like Chicago and um, sign up some restaurants and sign up some corporate accounts and uh, on the client side and then hire somebody in the market and go to the next city. And that's what I did really all through my 20s and had an opportunity to work with an incredible team there and a long time, you know, the, the founder there, Jason Finger, long time mentor and, and great friend of mine uh, who I've learned a ton from. Can, can you uh, give us something you learned that take, take away? I mean, that's like, that's like a, a tech group that grew like crazy in New York. Yeah. Uh, great brand, great company, but what did you learn? Oh, with Jason, I mean, so many things. Uh, he'll be embarrassed me even talking about this, but like one, one thing is Jason was great at constantly appreciating the journey we were all on. Like he was really good about saying, hey, you know, even on a rough day, which happens at a startup, you know, quite often, yeah. uh, even when you're growing, or particularly when you're growing really fast, um, remember that you're with the team that you care about, that you're learning from, that you enjoy being around, and you are, uh, you know, part of a really unique experience. And so go home every day, you know, and be thankful. Let's get into Thusio a little bit. Sure. Right. What are you doing at Thusio? How did it start the inception of Thusio? Um, I know it started with Julius back yep. in 2012. But talk about the co-founders and what you're doing there. Sure, sure. So, uh, yeah, so Thusio is really the second company, um, uh, second of two companies started by the same group of co-founders. Uh, myself, um, Mark Gerson, uh, founder and chairman of GLG, Gerson Lehrman Group. Um, Tiki and Mark hatched this idea back in 2012 to uh, build a marketplace where you could book professional athletes. And um, they were, you know, uh, gave me the opportunity to come in and, and run that business. Mm -hmm. and, and we did that. We built a marketplace where you could uh, identify athletes that you could book for your own uh, private appearances. And what happened while we were working on that marketplace business was that influencer marketing just exploded. And ultimately, uh, what we decided to do is expand outside of sports and use influencers, um, include in influencers of every genre, and, uh, and position the business model as a SaaS business model rather than a marketplace. Okay. Um, and upon making those changes, we ultimately uh, branded the business as Julius. And so when you research Thusio's background, you'll see a lot of um, information on, you know, our, our, we raised several rounds of venture funding um, uh, into Julius and uh, ultimately now Julius, I'm very happy to say, is a, a leading influencer marketing software application with a terrific CEO that we brought in. Right. Um, Doing uh, well. Almost, yeah, about, about, I think we're coming up on a year or two ago, um, named Steve Oriola. And, um, you know, we're very proud of, uh, of, of that business and, um, you know, it's, it's 
you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be a really great success. Yeah, yeah. As you grew the events business, Thuzio grew too. Yeah. Let's talk about you know some of what you're doing at Thuzio because it's one of the bigger yeah, so, so, sports events. Yeah. So so we're building Julius. Yeah. We're building yeah. this influencer marketing software application, and we start hosting events. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is we're basically running events with athletes in New York. Um, and uh, from Tiki's network and the business community from mine and Mark's network. And we were doing this initially because we thought in the, in the worst case, we've got a nice sort of paid event marketing program for our software business. In the best case, we are building something else that could be an entirely, you know, it could be a business on its own. And um, the feedback was just over the moon positive about this event, these events we were hosting. And what we were hearing from everyone was that if you had a buyer you were working on. So you're in sales and business development, you're an enterprise seller. You have a buyer that you're working on and you need to get that buyer's attention. You need to win time with that buyer. If you knew they were a fan of, let's say, the New York Yankees, if you could invite them to an event where they could meet, I don't know, Tino Martinez, yep. it was very likely they were gonna say yes. And so these, this, our network was coming to us and saying, this is the best enterprise sales tool I've ever had. I can get anybody out. And so, you know, I've come from a sales and business development background and 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 that to me was so powerful and I was seeing it firsthand working with Tiki. Like right. I felt like I could get a meeting with anybody. Um, and uh, and uh, Mark, no slouch either. But uh, uh, so in 2017, we decided there was enough there that we wanted to separate the events arm entirely from the software company and we did that. Mm -hmm. And in July 2017, we, we separated those two businesses and I had previously been you know, running both. I then devoted all of my time and have for the past two years to Thuzio, right. the events and media business. Um, and as I mentioned, we hired uh, uh, a great CEO into the software company, into Julius. That's awesome. It's, it's exciting too, because you're in this growth period, right? You're raising some funds. Yeah. Uh, you have these live storytelling events across the country. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about the funds that are being raised and how you're growing Thuzio across the country? Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. like, you know, you know, on the, very quickly on like the business and like what it is, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. what Thuzio is today is it's a national event series. Right, right. Uh, in 2019, we'll produce 60 events across eight U.S. cities, um, as well as activations at Super Bowl, NBA All-Star Weekend, the Masters, um, uh, NFL Draft. And all of our events have a f similar format. We produce a live documentary style interview. We yep. even bring members of the sports media to interview a, um, a very uh, you know, well-known and regarded athlete. Right. And the focus of the interview is to really pull out um, values and stories from business, or I'm sorry, from sports, that can apply back to life and business. Uh, leadership, teamwork, performance, et cetera, et cetera. And um, what's unique about these events, and there's about 150 to 200 attendees depending on uh, the night, um, is that to access them, you have to have a corporate membership with us. So we have a little over 200 corporate accounts, seven of the top 10 U.S. investment banks, six of the top 10 U.S. consulting firms that have access to these events for their enterprise uh, sales teams, as well as a lot of just small business owners that use the events uh, for, for engaging with clients. And so, um, so that's what Thuzio, that's, that's what it is. Right. Um, you, you had asked about... The growth and fundraising. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we're raising a round of financing. Yep. Uh, we elected to do um, a crowdfunding round with a partner of ours called Seed Invest. Um, I'd always only ever raised capital through a traditional venture process. My first time doing a crowdfunding round. It's been awesome, just so exciting and different, and Very kind cool. of this unique challenge. And we're and we're gonna raise. You know, we'll raise somewhere between one and two million. Um, in order to really invest in two areas. So we're gonna expand to 20 cities from eight. Yeah. We'll do that by the end of 2020. Um, uh, and then we're going to invest in our own uh, original content. So we have these great interviews with this amazing content. We film everything. We don't do a whole lot with that today. So we're gonna build a, a real content and media capability in house with a small team and start to, you know, build a digital audience that matches our, our live audience, um, which I think will be you know, significant. Increase the brand too, and then you're yeah. breaking up in digital media content that will help bring awareness, and uh, it's exciting, the new yeah. cities and everything like that. As you continue to build the network into these cities and the collaborations, uh, you have the business executives, 
uh, who are buying the memberships right. I see, and the business you know, sports executives too, yeah. who are speaking. You know, how do you build that network? How do you grow that uh, you know, solid group of people? So, so I, there's two networks really happening in Enthusio. There is the, the athlete network, yep. right? And you know, that network is one that we've worked, it, frankly, like had we not built an influencer marketing software company, I don't know that we would have been able to accomplish this. Like we, we just, we were just very well networked through the athlete community, the agency community, and we have great partnerships there. Yeah. And ultimately, um, we are, uh, you know, able to secure these really great athlete partners for our events. Um, on the uh, community side, um, you know, the, the business sort of feeds itself. We're, we're, we're providing an entertainment product just like a team would. Mm -hmm that gives you this opportunity to bring out people who are really important to you in your network for one reason or another. And, um, and with that, uh, you end up with a dynamic community of people. Uh, it's like- you Powerful know, people, yeah, decision makers. Just influential people, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like imagine, imagine if everybody in the really good seats at Yankee Stadium stood up and like walked to the bar and hung out for an hour. That, that's basically what's happening at a Thuzio right. event. I'd like to go to that bar and meet those people. I would too, so, uh, so yeah, so that's what happens. So the network, you know, it's a, it's a great network business. It, the community feeds itself. You know, at every Thuzio event, two thirds of the, the room have likely never been to an event before because they're guests of our members. Okay. So at every event, two thirds of the room are learning about us for the first time and that's one of the greatest uh, you know, lead generators for our business. Um, so that community just kind of feeds on itself and that's how we've been growing. And of course we have an enterprise sales process to help companies you know, make a decision about the product and, and buy. Yeah, that's, that's important too. I mean, you go to a lot of networking events, you see the same people. If you're getting a lot of new faces, that's valuable. Yep. Uh, what other collaborations are you looking for that maybe the LinkedIn community you know, can try to piece together, maybe they can reach out to you, but collaborations that you want to build on and opportunities that people can uh, touch base with? Yeah, I mean, so events are great because there's this ecosystem that wraps around it, which provides so many different opportunities for partnerships. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have, we, we are interested in meeting Great, you know, interesting athletes and sports personalities who want to tell a story directly to the business community. We're interested in meeting with the agents who represent them. Yeah. You know, so that's on the content side. Um, we are interested in meeting great moderators, you know, like great, uh, um, you know, sports uh, personalities and moderators uh, across sports media that are specifically interested in like documentary style content, yep. you know, like we're working with some great folks like, you know, Adam Lefko at Bleacher Report, Yogi Roth at Pac-12, like we, we have some really great, Teddy Greenstein um, uh, at the Chicago Tribune. So like not every sports reporter, sports media personality, um, many of them want to talk about the current team and what's going on that day and what's on Twitter, but we need to work with people who are really interested in like obsessed with a 30 for 30, right? And yeah. want to do those deep dive, more thoughtful uh, conversations. So um, always looking for, for great moderators to work with, venue partners. Yep. So, um, you know, we host these, these our events at, uh, you know, uh, really um, premium event spaces in major business districts. Um, and many, most of our events are happening by way of a partnership. You know, we're not just a, a customer walking into the door. Um, we're working with, um, you know, mem other membership organizations that have uh, a home base, you know, mm -hmm. a physical property where Thuzio does it and opening our event to their community and in return for them making their space available. Um, so there's all kinds of partners we do, partnerships we do on the venue side, so welcome that. And then the other thing is like, we're trying to get better as a media company. You know, like I often, I've been you know, chatting this summer with a lot of, uh, of our current and, and, and prospective investors, and sometimes I'll describe us as like, we're either a really well-run event company or really poorly run media company. And I want to become a much better, stronger right. media yeah. company. Yeah. yeah. So we, we're trying to build our competency in media. Sure. And so anyone who wants to talk to me about what to do with our video and audio content, like bring it. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're looking to learn and get better and find interesting ways to put it to work. Continue to evolve. I like that. And you got a lot a wide range of people that hopefully can reach out. Uh, we're going to take some questions in a little bit. I got Howard Cross, Super Bowl 25 legend. New York football giant champion.
champion here who's going to take the questions. Uh, but before we get into Howard's first question, that he's going to grab the mic in just a little bit. Can you talk about the culture, what you're kind of creating here with the team, and how you you know work together and you know new personnel coming on? Yeah, yeah. I will. I'll also say that. I'm happy to hijack this and just ask Howard a question about the Giants. He won't come if, on the if camera. That's though. what would be preferred because that's frankly what I'd rather talk about. But um, but maybe we could do a little bit of both. Uh, like we could do one from the audience yes. and one Giants question like or that. something like, like that. that. What do you think, Howard? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, uh, yeah, culture. Look, I think um, we're an eight-person team. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to raise this funding and we're going to probably double in team size over the next couple months. Um, I think when you are pre-10 people, it's just the most special time. And, and it's, you know, look, when you go to 10 to 30 heads, I think it's another special in its own way, yeah. unique time. But this is like, this is a very tight-knit, familial eight-person team at Thuzio that's right. been through a grind together figuring out how to run this business successfully because it's a model that hasn't, there's no one to just point to and say, oh, that's how you do it. Right. You know, um, it's a, we're scaling an event business with a, with a membership, a subscription, you know, component to it. So it's unique. Um, so I think the culture today is, is one of, you know, all the stuff you, you might, you might hear about multiple hats and chipping in and teamwork and all of those things. But I, I would say that the, the group holds each other to a very high standard of excellence. Like I think if you're gonna work at Thuzio, you, you, you better be ready to work very hard and at a very um, high level uh, in everything you do, big and small tasks. Right. Um, because that's, that's frankly, and that's not just me saying it, that's what everybody on the team expects. And that's how we're able to get so much out of such a small team. And when I tell people that, you know, the size of our company and, and, and the number of events and so on and so forth, they're often surprised, sure. you know, at how, how small we are from a manpower perspective. But we, we run lean and we'll continue to do so. Um, and uh, and you know we're all really proud of that. Of and you're hiring. Put so it. check out the and website. Check out the website. Yeah, the hiring. Yeah. Very important stuff here. Yeah, yeah. Hiring. I have to. Yeah, Pitch. hiring. We, uh, yeah. We want to hire. Um, we didn't post this yet. We want to hire a social media manager. All right. Um, we want to. We are hiring. We need to hire an accounting manager. Uh, we need to hire. Um, uh, it, a very, we're going to need to hire an enterprise sales executive and a few other positions on the site. Right. Um, so yeah, hiring is big. You that's like our big challenge. I like that. You heard days. it here first, though. I like yes, that. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Howard, what do we got? What's what's the uh, chatter? First question. first question will be for me personally. Like, Jared, try to explain to like the viewers how athletes and and basically sports kind of relate to business from your from your standpoint from Thuzio standpoint mm. like why is this such a great idea so i think and i like I'll, I'll i'll look to tiki who you know i think is like flushed this out really well but in all of these stories like all the stories you want to hear from athletes if you just put them in the context of business you you learn something so like we had a we had a really um we, have, we do an event with uh, Lawrence Taylor just about every year, Gra arguably the greatest defensive player of all time. Um, he talks about the 1990 Super Bowl against the Buffalo Bills and how Bill Belichick game planned for the Bills. And like now I'm getting all like Giants nerdy on everybody. No one's really going to understand that I context. But it, yeah. what they did was, what Belichick did was he said, we're going to let Thurman Thomas run for 200 yards. And all we're going to focus on is stopping the passing game. And I left that event, and, and the Giants went go on to win, and they stopped this amazing Bills, like how powered Bills offense. Howard's nodding because he knows better than anybody. And um, and uh, and uh, I left thinking, what should I be conceding to my competition and not focusing on? You know, so I can do other things well, right? Like where what are the areas we can win on? So that's one example, but it's in every great sports story. There is a lesson that can be applied back to life or business to help you just get better, to help you improve. And that's what I think athletes are, that's why I think like the talent are interested in doing our events because they get to talk about these stories in a way that maybe haven't been appreciated before in, the, in that context. He's got some other fun stories, I'm sure, too. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> you got you to gotta go to the not events here, to find out. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Not for oh, LinkedIn. So Mark asks, what's the difference between 
raising traditional funds from a VC and raising the crowdfunding. Yeah, so it's it, it's been wildly different. Um, so first of all, I, I don't think VC funding's for everybody and I don't think crowdfunding's for everyone. Um, why did I choose crowdfunding and this go? Because of a few reasons. One, we have a community around our business of potential investors. Our customers are potential investors, they have the means. Athlete partners are potential investors, they have the means. Crowdfunding, in its simplest form, gives you a great website where you can go invest. Mm -hmm. So this, for me, makes it easy for our entire community to participate in the round. Just an easy way to get people in, um, especially when you're a small team and you can't manage a ton of, you know, it's hard to manage a ton of paperwork. Um, two, we have a product that can be used by our investors. So, you know, if we're, if I was raising crowdfunding for Julius, you know, the investors are likely not uh, you know, a, a you know CMO at a brand, or you know, it's not like a product that can be used by you know most people. Whereas Thusio is a product that if you're if you are in sales at any capacity or growing your business or your network, you might consider our product. So it's just a very tangible product that can be used by them. And the third thing that I think goes underappreciated is Seed Invest has a killer team, a great team of marketers, a great team of financial experts. They make our business stronger for the summer while we're going through this raise process. Um, they help me with the company story, you know. So you're able to like bolster your own sort of executive expertise with these 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 crowdfunding partners. So for us, it's just you know it's worked really really well. Um, it continues to work well. We're closing at the end of this month, so go to the website, get involved. You know, we'll have, the link in, program. we'll have the link yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm really I'm really enjoying it and and. Uh, you know, it's just, to me, more fun trying to speak to a community of potentially interested investors than sitting across from a single VC uh, for an hour in a meeting. Um, it's just, a, I guess, a matter of a personal preference right now with this business. Interesting. Nice, nice. So, Leighton asked a question that you kind of answered, but I want to see, we'll, we'll ask it again. I'll paraphrase it. He wants to know, like, plan growth for Thuzio and Julius. And what other services do you see coming online? For Thusio. Um, and Julius. Good, yeah. Good question. Man. Yeah. So, so look, I would say, I mean, I'll nip the, the Julius one, you know, in the bud pre pretty, pretty quickly. I think that, you know, what Julius is working on is establishing itself as a leader in influencer marketing space um, uh, from a... Uh, from a, a search and, uh, and campaign management perspective. Um, it is a very robust enterprise solution that uh, every, every week is rolling out new and exciting features and um, there's people on that team that are far better positioned to speak to the specific product evolution there, but um, you know, it's working. Uh, on the Thusio side, doing what we do more broadly you know, taking what we've now are running and feel really good about this this really unique and special event product, bringing live sports storytelling nationwide to 20 cities. I think what's going to be new for us is that you're going to engage us in a digital environment. You know, just in a similar way as that you do to the live environment. So that's what's going to be different. I think right now people find out about Thusio because they go to an event. Now they're going to find out about Thusio because they're going to see a leadership series on LinkedIn you know, shared by an athlete. Um, and so that's going to be really different and new for us. Well, to expand on that, I know it's kind of hard to do, but you have a three-year projection. Where are you guys going to be in three to five years? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, this is all on our website anyway. So now I'm thinking about it. That's and another in too, interesting right? thing yeah. about crowdfunding is like you literally say, this is us, right? Open kimono, yep. here's the business. So it, you know, no, no issue talking about revenue and things like that. I think our, our, where we want to be is 20 markets, 200 events a year, $25 million in revenue, top line, $5 million in EBITDA. That's kind of the near term business that we're trying to build. Um, and you know we've got a 24 to 36 month time horizon on achieving that. Um, it, the, how we raise, whether we raise close to two million or one million, will largely dictate probably how fast we can go against those goals. Um, but either way, we're going to get there, and uh, and you know we're really excited about about doing that. I think you know growing a events and media company, we're very focused on profitability and positive EBITDA. Um, as, a, as, a, as a near term goal. We're nearly profitable, we will be very soon. Um, and so that's just a different way of growing a business potentially than being very focused on top line revenue growth for say a software company. 
Solid. Solid goals. As we wrap this up, can you give us in the community words to live by, your personal mantra, ethos, or some? Oh man, that's tough. Um, words to live by. Well, you know, one thing you will hear around Thuzio quite a bit is is M I H for make it happen. That's something that's that's something that you know I think the team yeah. subscribes to. So I'll share that with everybody. M I H. M I H. Do you have a question, challenge you could give to the community? Promote a little bit of engagement. Uh, with the LinkedIn you know, users who are watching. Yeah, I would love to know. So we're looking at 20 cities, mm-hmm. um, including, that's U.S. markets, including Toronto, uh, that we're going to be in by the end of 2020. Yep. Um, let me know your city that you want to see this in, and let me know, maybe not the athlete everyone knows that you might expect, right? So it's not Chicago Michael Jordan, okay? Like we all know everybody wants to see Chicago. But give me, give me the name of the athlete you know from your community that you think would be great on stage and speaking to a group of, of business professionals, you know? Yeah. Uh, so give me your city and give me that athlete you want to see on our stage. Charles Oakley, we put him on there? <laughs> yeah, Charles. Yeah, yeah. You got something else, Howard? I have one thing, one thing because th- this just highlights you guys. Without saying it or how to, how to explain it, without paraphrasing because you don't have one with you, give me a, like one of the love letters you guys got. Like, Thuzio is so great. You guys did such a great job. What, what are your clients saying? So, our, uh, look, our clients, our clients love us. Like, we help, we help them help their most important clients have a memory for life. So they adore us because ultimately it leads to close business, right? And we help them do that in an exciting and memorable way. I also love, you know, Howard on the athlete side. Like we get really great feedback. It often sounds a little bit like, I thought this was gonna be kind of tough, but like that was really that was really nice. Like Tiki often says, it's painless on the athlete side, right? You get there's no gotcha moments. You you tell you tell your story to an interesting group of people and get to meet some great contacts along the way. Um, so, you know, we're doing, we're, we're doing well on, on feedback all around, I would say, from the community. Solid. Uh, that's it. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, Nadal's going to hit the music, and we're going to wrap it up right now. Thanks. Awesome. Cool. That's it. That's it. We got Howard. You know? This in music is undescribable. The happiness in music.